So hello guys, it is of course me, Trollface the Man, and welcome back to another Patreon early release video. This is a series of videos that I give uh, early access to my Patreons. Uh, it comes out about five days before its public release. Anyways, in today's video I'm going to show you how to get free HDD hard disk drives out of DVRs like this. You can see that this is a old DirecTV DVR. The way I can tell it's a DVR is because it has record function on it. So if you find these uh, on the side of the road, I oftentimes do, you just find them on the side of the road when somebody upgrades or downgrades or, you know, goes to Dish or goes to DirecTV, they'll just throw out their own their old DVRs. Now, just because they record on there doesn't expressly mean that it's going to be a DVR because they also have those little sub boxes that route to a main DVR like this and the main DVR records while the sub boxes work as playback. I know for a fact this one does have a hard disk drive in there because I was able to peek in through these back holes here and actually see it. Now first thing is that this had some special tamper resistant screws. You can see I haven't actually opened it yet. This is the uh, the void if warrant or void if opened warranty seal. All I did was I broke the screws using a pair of pliers just enough so that way I can finish unscrewing them with this screwdriver. But they have uh, special tamper resistant star bits on here to basically stop people from being able to take this apart. Um, they have a little nub in there that's supposed to get or supposed to stop star drivers from going in deep enough to actually start unscrewing this. So you have to have a special star driver with a divot in the center of the uh, the tip to actually go all the way down in there and break the screws. But like I said, I broke them first with a pair of pliers, which gave me enough leeway now that I should be able to get it undone the rest of the way with my precision screwdriver here. So. I'm just going to finish taking all these out, no point in you guys actually watching me just unscrew these, so I'll be back in a second. So yeah, I apologize for, this is like one of the first videos I'm, I'm making in quite a while, and um, that comes down to, um, I was having a lot of uh, health problems, chest pains and nausea and stuff like that, that uh, I wasn't in any uh, ability to actually, I wasn't in good enough ability to actually make new videos like I was. Ironically enough, I got better after about two months, and then as soon as I get better, my dad hurts his back and was literally completely debilitated for um, about a month. So I was taking care of him. However, he's getting better. I'm better. I hope to be doing more videos soon. So that's the last screw out. Like I said, I haven't actually been in this DVR yet. I'm hoping that it's not going to be full of a bunch more tamper resistant screws, but you can never know. I'm going to take it that this cover just slides off like this. Yep. You can see now that the, uh, the sticker has been voided. You can actually use this too to upgrade the capacity of your DVR if you really want, but you are going to void your warranty. So yeah, let me just bring this up here for you so that way you can see everything that's going on in here. So there's a couple of good salvageable things in here. First off, I'm going to take these uh, super capacitors and definitely these um, uh, transformer or coils or anything like that that I see in there. Uh, I'm going to rip off this aluminum heat sink. Uh, I like to use these little heat sinks here, like so, to uh, cool off high wattage LEDs. Uh, and uh, this fan here can be used for some projects. I mean, basically there's a lot of good salvageable stuff in here. Also, not to mention that this is just a regular SATA cable right here that you can use just in a regular old computer. So you can use that to hook up like a hard disk drive right into your computer. So that's obviously useful. This right here is a, a four pin to SATA adapter for your power supply. So that once again is useful still. And of course we have what we are looking for, which is the hard disk drive. Look at that, beautiful. Now, I can't believe how good of condition that these people kept this DVR in. Like, they must have kept it in a completely dust-free environment. I literally just found this on the side of the road, and 
it was in great shape. No dust on it, no nothing. The only dust that actually accumulated on it was from sitting around my house. So, it looks like that these screws right here are just standard Phillips, but they do look a little bit stripped out. Companies sometimes do that purposely, uh, so that way you can't easily get at the stuff. But like I said, if you did have a DVR like this, and you wanted to uh, upgrade, you could potentially swap the hard disk drive, but be forewarned, a lot of times they put pri proprietary operating software on the DVR. So if you do swap the hard disk drive, you would have to basically make a clone uh, copy, mirror image copy of this hard disk drive on the new hard disk drive, otherwise it won't work. All right, that's too small. And we'll also, if you just pop out this hard disk drive and you try and use it in your computer, it too most likely will not work for that exact reason. You're going to have to partition it, which I'll show how to do here in a minute. Yeah, like I said, they purposely stripped out the uh, purposely stripped out the screws here to make it difficult to uh, to get at. This one might work. By the way, precision screwdriver sets, one of the best investments I made, especially seeing as that one only cost me a dollar at a garage sale. It's missing a few pieces, but can't beat a dollar. There we go. You can see me just taking out these screws. It looks like I might have to tear off this faceplate of this thing in order to uh, to get at the other screws on the other side. Another thing, of course, that's uh, salvageable in these, uh, yeah, that, that has one of those tamper resistant screws on it too. This one is actually the star with the divot. One of the things that's nice about uh, stuff like this too is you can just take the metal and you can use that to, uh, just to salvage. Just toss it in a bin somewhere and eventually take it back for uh, whatever you can get out of it. I'm going to try and see if I can break this with, without using the pliers. <sighs> nope, doesn't look like it. This is what I had to do with the other ones in the case, is I had to actually grab them with pliers first and break them before I could actually get them with the uh, regular screwdriver. And I might be able to get it. Like I said, I just can't get the screwdriver in deep enough to actually break them at first. So I use a pair of pliers. Uh, it does a great job. This is actually a piece of aluminum. I can actually prove that by taking these super strong. Neodymium magnets, nothing. I put it anywhere near. These are strong magnets. That's just the magnets grabbing that. So hey, piece of aluminum. All right, face plate, it looks like, for the most part, I'm just gonna have to uh, pop off these little plastic tabs. Pop those down. Maybe? Pop them up here. Okay, here we go. You always think these are gonna be easy, and they never are. here too. And on the bottom. One thing I found out is you can basically almost never take apart these things, these types of things, without completely destroying the face plates because they have so many clips in them that you always end up breaking something off. Uh, just got uh, a nice little razor cut there from the edge of this metal. 
was a deep one. It's another thing I find whenever I do something like this. I always manage to cut myself in some stupid way. Also cut my knuckle too. All right, excuse me one second while I just tear this off with force. Lots and lots of force. Very messy force. Be right back. Uh, yes, there we go. Turns out the solution was simpler than I thought. It just involved me breaking off like every single clip. Unplug this wire for the buttons here. And. Get out this last clip here. Now, sometimes you can find these too. Not all the time. But sometimes you can find these in uh, resale shops too. They might be trying to uh, sell them for a dollar or so. And I mean, if you pick it up, it's definitely worth it because these hard drives, uh, hard drive like this, would at least cost thirty bucks. That's pretty much the about minimum price of a um, of a hard disk drive. So you can't beat it for getting one for like a dollar or so. And here we go. Moment of truth. Here it is. Like I said, this is literally the same exact hard drive you would use in your computer. There's nothing special about it. Uh, they just buy hard drives directly from, it's nice because this one has a SATA connection too. They just buy hard disk drives from um, companies like Seagate and such and then they slap them in here. So as you can see this one is a 320 gigabyte drive. Not too bad. I mean most of the stuff as an average. Got some kids playing outside. I got the window open because it's absolutely sweltering in here. Um, as an average, I usually like to stick with one terabyte or uh, 500 gigs, but uh, not too bad. Let me see. 320 gigabytes doesn't actually say it's RPM on here, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be 7200 RPMs. So basically a standard uh, hard disk drive. And that, my friends, can go right in the bin of salvaged hard disk drives. Oh wait, no it actually can't because you still need to partition this if you want to use it for your computer. If you were to plug this into your computer right now and try and run it, nothing would happen. It would literally not even read the hard disk drive and that's because once again it has a different operating system than what your computer recognizes so basically you need to format the hard disk drive and repartition it which I will switch over to my computer and show you how to do like I said in the meanwhile for the rest of this I'll just tear off this get the aluminum here get out the uh, super capacitor right here what is that that is a uh, 400 volts, too. Got to keep my eye on that, make sure I don't accidentally discharge it on myself. Uh, and then the transformers and heat sink right here for that, what I would assume is a MOSFET. I mean, all that different stuff has its different uses. But right now, let's get back to the hard disk drive because that is what this is about. So yes, after I um, took out the uh, hard disk drive, I mentioned that you're going to have to partition it, otherwise it's not going to work straight in your computer. And I currently have it hooked up to my computer via the SATA cable that I actually got um, with the drive. And as you can see, it's not showing up in any of my drives. These are all ones I already have installed. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do something called partition it. So if you're in Windows, you can just go down here, type in part and it should come up with crate and format hard disk partitions. If you're on Mac, well, my condolences, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're on Linux, I have no clue how to do this, but good for you being on Linux and all. All right, so that's opened up down here. Sorry, I just took a sip of water. And 
you can see all my current hard disk drives. Um, this one right here is new volume D, uh, new volume, or no, excuse me, recording drive Z, uh, my main drive C, which is my hard disk drive, my backup drive, and then all the way down here at the bottom, I have this new drive, disk four, that just isn't actually given any name. And if I click on it, you can see that it's just, it's nameless. This is the new drive that I installed, and you can tell it's like 280 or 98 uh, gigabytes. The one that I got out, I think it's supposed to be 333. So to actually get this in the shape to use it inside of your computer, all you need to do is select these partitions and delete volume. Yes, and you wanna make sure you definitely do this on the new drive and not any of your other drives because if you delete the volume on like, let's say for example, your system drive, things are gonna end pretty badly. Delete volume. And basically all I'm doing is I'm making the space uh, unallocated, which just means that it's blank space. And we need to do this to rewrite uh, NTFS format on it so that way that uh, it can function like a normal hard disk drive for your computer. So now that this is all unallocated, you can right click and hit new simple volume. It'll bring up this wizard and hit next. Uh, this should just automatically be the max size that the volume can be. Next. Uh, you can give it a specific letter. Uh, I'm going to give it the letter X. Uh, probably don't have to mess with anything else here unless you're trying to do something specifically. Next. File system NTFS. That's exactly what you want. Uh, the fat volumes are usually used for like USB drives and such. Uh, location size, default, volume label, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, I'll just put uh, recovered. I'll just put recover actually for short. Uh, and there's two options here, whether or not you want to perform a quick format or a full format. A quick format is going to be pretty qu well quick. It's just basically going to take the drive and say you can write over all this blank space. A full format will actually write over all the blank space or all the uh, space in the drive with uh, blank information. For this purpose, I'm just going to do a quick format. So next, everything's good, finish, okay. Now it's gonna take a second to perform the actual format part. No, oh, now here we go. So we have a new drive called Recov. It's X drive, and now if I go back to my uh, drives listed for the computer, it's not showing up. If I hit F5, you can see that I now have my new drive Recov here. I can just click on it, new folder, create new folders just like I could normally. I can take data and put it on the drive as I would normally. So like, let's just grab something from here. So I can copy this. And paste it in here. And you can see it's, it's now a completely usable drive. I'm currently using it for my computer. No problems whatsoever. It's literally the same exact drive that you would have just gotten out of uh, a computer just from a DVR. Completely free and like I said, a drive like this would probably cost, I'm guessing, you know, 40 bucks in the minimum. Well anyways, you can see now that the drive is working. Uh, it was a completely free drive from a DVR. Not too bad, a drive like this would probably cost, you know, 20 to 40 dollars if you were to get it new not that you can find these specific size drives anymore usually the standard minimum is about 500 gigabytes but i mean if you just look at looked or if you just needed a quick upgrade to your computer's drive space if you have an old computer that only has like 60 or god forbid like 20 gigabytes like my original laptop uh this might be a good option not for laptops specifically of course but for your computer or you can add extra drives in here like I do which I usually use for uh, recording and such so these are just drives that I save recordings to 
uh, while I'm editing videos. That's also very, very good. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video, uh, please remember to comment, to rate, to subscribe, and to click that bell icon and subscribe for all notifications if you want to. And don't forget, this is a Patreon early release video, which means that if you want early access to videos like this, please consider supporting my Patreon. You'll get early access to videos like this five days before their public release. And like I said, if you found this video helpful, if you've done this yourself, if you uh, gotten a drive, and you know you got it for free or whatever please let us let people know in below let me know let other people know in below blah, blah, blah. let me know and let other people know below that you know you've used this technique before you got free drive so what people know that it's actually legitimate anyways guys thank you very much for watching and bye